Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, I think we have waltzed into Thursday, August 25th, 2022. So guys, uh, this was supposed to be the rant I was doing... Uh, I was going to do last night, but I got kind of sidetracked on to getting, uh, <laughs> getting into a pseudo debate with our old friend Book Hermit. Uh, so anyway, we're finally going to get back to what we, uh, what I was going to be talking about yesterday. And, you know, good Lord, how many of you have sent me this, uh, various versions of this story? Uh, written by our old buddy Robert Hunziker. I mean, I need to... You know, sometimes I miss doing my interviews. I've interviewed Robert two or three times, I think. He is always a pleasure to talk to. So I'm a little bit confused, guys. Is countercurrence and counterpunch the same thing? I'm totally, it's counter something anyway. Uh, whether you call it countercurrents or counterpunch, uh, Robert Hunziker has this uh, new article, and I'm so happy that he does. And even Book Hermit, I think, I think that Book Hermit will uh, give the thumbs up to uh, Robert Hunziker's article. And really, what Robert's article is about is about this fellow. Uh, Good Lord, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name right. Simon, uh, how do you pronounce uh, M-I-C-H-A-U-X? I'm going to say Michel. I don't know, Simon uh, Michel, and I really sometimes wish I was uh, still interviewing people. I would definitely like to bring Simon on. Now, Simon... He's got several. There, you can find uh, him all over YouTube. Now, there's now in this article that I'm going to put the link to. Robert uh, has uh, linked you over to this. Good Lord, I think it's like an hour and forty-two minutes where Simon Michelle breaks this down. Simon, uh, he actually. I think it is his background is actually in the mining industry or I don't know if he was from the inside or analyzes it but Simon Michel has done his work but I, I have to admit guys that there, there's it, it's hard to take uh, the man is uh, good Lord this dude has done his homework on the bright green lie. It's all about the bright green lie of uh, th this ridiculous myth. And uh, it, it is a myth and it is the bright green lie that this planet is going to quote, wean itself off, off of fossil fuels and just move over to all of this BS renewable energy this clean green energy <coughs> and everything is going to be fine on the planet. We're going to get in our little electric cars, uh, put our solar panels on the roof and the windmill and, uh, and, and life can just go on. We can just go on with 10 billion of us. Uh, but so Simon Michel uh, has brought a very detail-oriented breakdown of the bright green lies. And I was watching uh, this video and a couple of others thinking I would really, you know, I'm talking about over the past week or two, and thinking, you know, I would really like to break down what this man is saying in these videos, but it was it, even just even just condensing his hour and 42 minute video uh, into less than 30 minutes would have, uh, I wouldn't have gotten any work done on my tiny house. So I am so thrilled to uh, find that Robert Hunziker 
I guess he calls himself an environmental journalist. I don't know. Do you consider yourself an enviro, uh, Robert? So Robert Hunziker has done my job for me. So I'm just going to give uh, Robert Hunziker the thumbs up. And so Robert Hunziker has pretty much done the hard work of distilling Simon Michel's lifetime of hard work explaining why we are not going to simply get off fossil fuels and save the planet with this clean green energy revolution uh, all right so uh, give us the highlights robert and if i can find my cursor in the bright sun I have, you know, would somebody please tell me how you make your cursor some other color than white? I know there's a way to make your cursor like orange and big. Could someone please tell me how uh, I've got, uh, you know, Windows. How on Windows 10 I make my cursor big and orange? Okay. So now that I thought I had found my cursor, we have Robert Hunziker asking the question, after listening to Simon Michel, is there enough metal to replace oil? And we all know the answer to that question. The short answer, no, not even close. Nations of the world are only too aware that fossil fuels need to be phased out for two reasons. First off, it is a finite commodity. It will run out in time. Secondly, fossil fuel emissions such as CO2 are destroying the planet's climate system. However, a recent study puts a damper on the prospects of phasing out fossil fuels in favor of renewables. More to the point, a phase out of fossil fuels by mid-century looks to be a nearly impossible Sisyphean task. It is all about quantities of minerals and metals contained in Mother Earth there are not enough. Simon Michel, a PhD of the Geological Survey in Finland, he's actually from Australia now, I guess, working for the Geological Survey in Finland, has done a detailed study of what is required to phase out fossil fuels in favor of renewals, renewables to it. So he went through, so thank you, Robert, for doing my job. So Robert went through this hour and 42 minutes and teased out, you know, the, the, the doomer porn out of the middle of it. <clears throat> but if you want this fleshed out with all sorts of charts and graphs and good Lord, uh, go on this YouTube link buried in the link that I'm putting up here and you can listen to this yourself all right take it away Simon Michel quote the quantity of metal required to make just one generation of renewable tech units to replace fossil fuels is much larger than first thought Current mining production of these metals is not even close to meeting demand. Current reported mineral reserves are also not enough in size. Most concerning is copper as one of the flagged shortfalls. <clears throat> Exploration for more at required volumes will be difficult with this seminar addressing these issues. Um, anyway, and then, uh, you know, this was this YouTube video. 
which I think was an hour and 42 minutes, was from a seminar on the uh, myth of the fossil fuel transition. Okay, <clears throat> back to uh, Robert Hunziker's summary of Michel's report. Metals and minerals required to source gigafactories producing renewables to power the world's economies when fossil fuels phase out looks to be one of the biggest quandaries of all time. There is not enough metal. Michel researched and analyzed the current state of the internal combustion engine fleet of cars, trucks, rail, maritime, shipping, and aviation for the U.S., Europe, and China, accessing databases to gather information as a starting point for his study. Michel's calculations for what is required to phase out fossil fuels using a starting point of 2018 with 84 and a half percent of primary energy still fossil fuel based and less than one percent of the world's vehicle fleet electric. Therefore, the first generation of renewable energy is only now coming on stream, meaning there will be no recycling availability of production materials for some time. Production will have to be sourced from mining. I think we all know what, uh, what Simon's talking about here. That since these are the first time we've had all of these products, we can't act like we can just recycle what's already here. We've never been here before. We're starting from scratch. You can't recycle scratch. It's coming out of the planet. <clears throat> when Michel presented basic information to EU analysts, it was a shock to them. To his dismay, dismay they had not put together the various mineral and metal data requirements to phase out fossil fuels replaced by renewables, they assumed using guesstimates the metals would be available. So in the, uh, what Robert is alluding to here is, uh, I think that he's talking about uh, at one point in his hour and 42 minutes, Simon was talking about the World Economic Forum. Uh, what did he say? He he didn't say pulling their numbers out of their you-know-what. I think he said, you know, he, he went and, and looked at the World Economic Forums. Uh, look at this, and, and, and all he could conclude is that they just pulled the numbers right out of the air, you know, telling folks what they wanted to hear, that we could do it. It's a big, fat lie. There's no way it's going to happen. Ain't going to happen. All right, back to uh, Robert and Simon. A key issue for accomplishment of renewables is power storage because of the impact of wind and solar's intermittency, both of which are highly intermittent. Most studies assume natural gas will be the buffer for intermittency other than using a fossil fuel such as gas as a buffer, an adequate power storage system to handle intermittency will require 30 times, 30 times more materials than what electric vehicles require with current plans, meaning the scope is much larger than the current paradigm allows. Hmm. One factor that will influence what materials and systems are used to build out renewables is the fact that electric vehicles require a battery that is 3.2 times the mass of the equivalent of a hydrogen fuel tank. 
Therefore, an analysis of EVs of electric vehicles versus hydrogen fuel cells indicates it will be necessary to the build out to build out the global fleet with EVs for city traffic and hydrogen fuel cells for all long range vehicles like semi trailers, rails, and maritime uh, maritime shipping. Uh, The, okay, here we go. This is what I was listening to in this in uh, Simon's uh, speech. The entire renewable build out requires 36,000 terawatt hours to operate, meaning 586,000. 586,000 new non-fossil fuel power stations of average size. <coughs> the current fleet of power stations is only 46,000. <coughs> I love that, only 46,000 power plants on the planet. <coughs> Meaning, it will take 10 times the current number of power stations yet to be built. <clears throat> and of course, I forgot to put a glass of water out here. <clears throat> All right. The new annual energy capacity of 36,000 terawatt hours will supply Number one, 29 million electric vehicle buses, 601 million commercial EV vans, 695 million EV passenger cars, 29 million hydrogen cell trucks, 62 million electric motorcycles. Hydro will also need to be expanded by a 100, this is hydropower, hydropower will also need to be expanded by 115 percent by the year 2050 and nuclear will need to double. Biomass will still stay the same. It is already at limitations and geothermal triples. So if we do all of this, uh, it, 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 it just gets laughable. I don't know how Simon uh, was keeping a straight face during his presentation when he was, when he was going down this chart uh, of these bullets. Uh, with, uh, you know, in order for us to pull off uh, this stunt, there, there is no way uh, that any of this is going to happen. Additionally, if, you, uh, if that's not enough, additionally, buffer systems are crucial to handle intermittency. For example, Hornsdale Power Reserve in Australia, which is an Elon Musk project with a 100 megawatt capacity. The EU is using Horn State as the standard buffer system. Globally, 15,635,478 Hornsdale type stations will need to be built across the planet and connected to the power grid system just to meet a four week buffer system. This is 30 times the, com the capacity compared to the entire global vehicle fleet. 
Therefore, the market for batteries is substantially larger than currently understood and accounted for in planning for a renewable economy. Find my cursor again. <clears throat> the International Energy Agency released a report on how much metal is required per unit to build out a renewable economy, as well as a study of what 2040 market share would look like for batteries for light duty vehicles and heavy duty vehicles and power storage at the level of the global fleet for solar panels in 2040 and hydrogen fuel cells, truck freight locomotives, maritime shipping, wind turbines, and power storage buffer. The total metals required for one generation of technology to phase out fossil fuels is listed by required production followed by known reserves for all metals based, based upon tons as follows. And I am now being blinded by the sun. So I'm going to trade out with a little dog here. You can go hang out in the sun, little dog. Ah, much better. All right, we're going to break this down. Uh, and again, guys, this is uh, this is the Cliff Notes version uh, that Robert has put together from Simon's excellent presentation. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not going to read out these these numbers. Uh, I, I, I'm even going to have to give a Cliff Notes version of Robert's Cliff Notes uh, and just read the uh, the the verbiage. Copper shows a serious shortfall. Reserves only cover twenty percent of the requirements of the copper, what we know that we have in the ground, uh, we, we need to find five times as much as that and just go on YouTube and look at an example of a copper mine, multiply that times five, assuming we could even find it. Uh, nickel is showing a huge shortfall Reserves are at 10% of requirements. Go look up uh, nickel mining. Of course, do not forget the L word, lithium, where we have a huge shortfall, fall, where present reserves are 10% of what we'll need. Cobalt like lithium showing a huge shortfall uh, where reserves are three and a half percent of the cobalt we're gonna need. We, we know where three and a half percent of this is and, and look at the problems that is already causing. Graphite, another huge shortfall coming in at around three and a half percent. Silicon, oh, we actually have enough silicon and silver, so according to Simon. Vanadium, a huge shortfall, about three and a half percent. Anyway, moving on. Prior to 2020, prior to 2020, uh, so this is ancient history now, the global system mined 700 million tons of copper throughout all of history. Looking forward, that same 700 million tons will need to be mined over the next 22 years, hmm. which is based upon current economic growth rates without giving consideration to what is needed 
for one generation of renewables. Current reserves of copper are 880 million tons, but four and a half billion tons of copper is required just to manufacture one generation of renewable technology. Hmm. Moreover, each renewable technology has a life cycle of 8 to 25 years, you know, depending on what part of the technology you're analyzing. Therefore, they need to be decommissioned and replaced. Also, whether renewables are strong enough, sustainably enough, yes, sustainably enough to power the next industrial era is a question that hangs in the air, like the question of the next industrial era. Yes, the next industrial era. Uh-huh. I, I think that Robert was saying that tongue-in-cheek. Uh, okay, let's look at the past and the present. First, uh, this we're going to quote Michel here. This is Simon Michel summing up the past. The past. An industrial ecosystem of un precedented size and complexity that took more than a century to build with the support of the highest calorie dense source of cheap energy the world has ever known oil in abundant quantities with easily available credit and unlimited mineral resources and he left out the part of the past where the global population demanding all of this stuff was, uh, you know, one-fourth of what it is now. Even a genius like Simon Michel uh, not factoring in the population while looking at the difference from the past to the present. And now Simon Michel is going to bring us up to the present. The present. We now seek to build an even more complex system with very expensive energy, a fragile financial system saturated in debt, not enough minerals, with an unprecedented number of human population embedded in a deteriorating environment, close quote. All right, so uh, he does get it. Yes, we now seek to build an even more complex system with very expensive energy, a fragile financial system saturated in debt, not enough minerals, with an unprecedented number of humans of human population embedded in a deteriorating environment. So that is where we sit today on August 25th, 2022. And if uh, Simon Michel defined the future uh, in the hour and 42 minutes, I guess Robert Hunziker uh, did not hear it or uh, did not care to share it, my guess is Simon is uh, letting you figure out, looking at the past and the present, figure out your own future. And winding this up, back to Robert, current mineral reserves are not adequate to resource metal production to manufacture the generation of renewable energy technology as current mining is not even close to meeting the expected demand for one generation of renewable technology. 
Thank you, Robert Hunziker, once again for doing uh, my work for me and bringing the excellent work of Simon Michel uh, into the Doomosphere. And if you are interested in this and you're a big fan of charts and graphs and uh, you don't have some Netflix sleaze to tend to, I highly suggest you go listen to Simon himself. But now that I am done with that, I have to get back to uh, my dead hemlock trees siding my tiny house. It is looking good. We are moving up the walls. Rob is up putting on the roof. And we're putting on the outside walls. Get out there and uh, side your tiny house while you still can see all these leaves falling. So it is August 25th. August 25th. I'm sitting under this beautiful maple tree out behind the tiny house that we've already. I mean, look at look at this. It's August 25th. Now, last year, this maple tree was literally molding, molding. The, the leaves, uh, virtually every leaf on this tree was covered with mold, and these moldy, wet leaves fell off about this time last year. So now we have this year, where these dried up leaves are already uh, coming in about six weeks early, crunching the dry, dead leaves. Uh, and there's my poor little dried up babbling brook. Good God. But it is a gorgeous day other than that. Uh, and we got to get back up that mountain like Sisyphus. Get back to work, my guys.